guys and welcome to Nicker. In today's video, I'm going to go over how to make this really cute little s'more amigurumi. Alright, so uh, next video I will be doing the sloth for the Luna Squish, but today I'm going to be doing this little s'more. I'm really excited with how he turned out. It was actually a suggestion by my father-in-law, who uh, when we went camping, he was like, well, you should do a s'more amigurumi. So I decided why not? I would actually do that. All right, so it's a really easy pattern. Essentially, you're going to be making three different squares and just the little marshmallow base. So these are all the same size. They're just in different colors. I'm going to be using, I'm gonna pop them over here and I'm not gonna touch them because his mouth is still wet from some fabric paint. You will need some fabric paint or if you just want to use some yarn to stitch a mouth, you can do that as well. I am using fabric paint because I prefer that. I also used a hot glue gun in order to get all my pieces to assemble and to go together. I then took the hot glue and squished him really tight. So I'm going to just kind of let him exist over here for a minute. Um, actually, I'm going to let him exist a little bit further out because knowing me, I would touch the mouth again. I've already touched it once and it did not go well. So you will need some fabric paint for this pattern. I also used some blush. You can also use fabric paint to do the little cheeks if you would like to use fabric paint for that. But I actually find that using legitimate blush, I got this from the Dollar Tree and I use a legitimate little brush that I got in one of my beauty boxes. I don't really know what this one's called, but you can probably find one fairly similar over at the Dollar Tree as well. I love our Dollar Tree, it has a ton of stuff. I'm gonna set these to the side now. I am using a D crochet hook. This is by Furls Crochet. It is handcrafted. They did send me this and I do have an affiliate link with them just to be completely transparent. But I fell in love with this after I got their quarantine kit. And then they sent me this one, which is the Odyssey after they saw my review. So I figured I should show the hook because I fell in love with it. I've been using it almost exclusively for the last like month now. It is beautiful. I love it. And it actually works really well for my stitches. All right. That's enough of my infomercial right there. I'm also going to be using a darning needle. I'm going to be using some scissors. These ones I bought over at Hobby Lobby. They're super duper adorable. They're little unicorns. Like how cute can you get? I'm also using size 12 millimeter safety eyes. These have the backings on the back. So there's that. I'm also going to be using Vanish Choice Yarn. This is what I have in stock and I've been trying not to go to the store so this is why the colors might be a little bit funky but I also just have a ton of Vanish Choice in an entire basket from stuff that I've done before for Amigurumi. So these are over here. This color is in Honey which is what the Graham Cracker is done. This chocolatey brown color and then just straight up white. I'm using just a little bit of each so you don't need a ton but you will need to have all three different colors. It is essentially just a worsted weight yarn or a size for yarn to go with your D uh, or size 3.25 crochet hook. This is a fairly simple pattern. I'm pretty excited with how this turned out. I have noticed that they don't actually have Vanna's Choice over at Joann's anymore, at least not at my Joann's and not through the app or website. So you might have to actually go through like yarn.com or yarnspirations or any other place where you can get Vanna's Choice. I don't know if they're kind of getting rid of it and phasing it out or what, but I would be very bummed out if I find out that they actually are phasing this out. But essentially you'll just need the toasty color for the graham cracker, the chocolate, and the marshmallow color in worsted weight yarn essentially. So as long as you've got worsted weight, this will work. I'm going to actually start out with the marshmallow and then we will go on from there. So I'm going to put him over here and then we can get started. All right, so this is not a um, super beginner's pattern. As a beginner, as long as you know these uh, specific techniques, then you can do this pattern, but I'm not going to go step by step and go over the exact moves. I have a crochet 101 playlist that will describe all of these methods if you wanna do that down below, but I am going to be describing terms and doing that when I'm working on my work. So like here, I will start with a slip knot. You will also need to be comfortable with single crocheting working in the round and doing increases and decreases as well as stuffing your work. So increases, decreases, single crochets and stuffing as well. Um, essentially, you'll also need to be comfortable with um, working in the back loops or in also the front loops. We're gonna be doing some back loop crochet to create the line for our little marshmallow to make it a little bit more kind of rectangular. 
in its oval ways. I don't really know how to describe it other than just to say it, it gives it kind of defined edges along its ovalness. So let's get started. We are going to create a slip knot and we're actually going to be doing the exact same increasing um, steps as we do for our amigurumi whale. That link will also be down below in case you are interested in a more uh, slow version of this increasing pattern. I'm going to pop up a chart right here as well as the general marshmallow pattern so that you can see that there will also be a printable pdf for that down below you can get that pdf down below for free so make sure that you can get that down below and it will be on Ravelry and I believe I'm also going to try to get it on love knitting so love knitting just takes a little bit longer so if the link's not up yet because I just uploaded then it will be up later but you can get it pretty much immediately off Ravelry so we're going to do our magic ring which is essentially for me just chaining two, one, two, and then I go into the first chain. This is not the typical magic ring. This is just how I do my magic ring. So I'm going to go inside my first chain that I just made, skipping the second one that I made, and I'm going to put six single crochet on the inside of it. One, two, trying not to split my yarn the entire time around, three, four, five, six. And if you noticed on the chart, which you can screenshot those uh, as well, you will be increasing six stitches every single round until we reach 30 stitches. We are currently at six stitches. We are going to then go from our six stitches here. We're going to go back inside our very first little single crochet here. I am going through the front loop only when it comes to my amigurumi. I just think that that looks cuter, but we will be changing that in the future. I'm trying to, there we go. I always forget to have my hook not facing this way and having it facing up. So I'm going to be placing two single crochet and increasing every single one of these six stitches. So three and four, we're going to be going from six stitches to 12. We're going to go into our third stitch and increase five and six. So we have that many uh, things that we've done on this round, seven and eight. Keep increasing every single stitch until we get to 11, nine and 10. Get to 11 and 12. This is our last increase, 11 and 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What I also like to do at this point in time is I like to tug on my tail, make sure that it is nice and tight. And then I'm going to actually take my hook and I'm going to take my tail and kind of pull it through that stitch like so, so that I can keep track of where my row begins and ends. So now, uh, in order to increase six stitches this round, we're going to be basically single crocheting one and increasing because essentially our last round, we made it so that there's a stitch between each six single crochet. We're going to single crochet one, increase. Next round, single crochet two, increase. The round after that, single crochet three, and increase, and that'll be our last increase. So here, we're going to single crochet one, and there we go, increase. one, then increase this stitch. So two going inside that same stitch. See if I had left my s'more there, that ball would have gone right into that little s'more's mouth and I would have been very sad. Here we're increasing. One, and increase. There we go. One. And there we go. Oh, what am I missing? There we go. Increase. And I believe this is our last increase. It should be. One. And increase. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have 18 stitches. I'm gonna kind of pull that off, put my hook in here, and I'm gonna move my marker. So I'm gonna take my tail out from where it was and pull it through this stitch. Now we are going to go from 18 stitches to 24. This is our second from last increase round. We are going to single crochet one, two, increase, because this is what's in line with what we've done increasing before. So one, two, and increase. So two inside that same stitch, one, two, there's some fluff, sorry about that, three is the increase stitch, so we're putting two inside of that same stitch right there, you can see that, see that there's two stitches in there, one, two, three, and increase, I had to pull my yarn out a little bit, there we go, one, two, three, and increase, one, two, three, and increase, same stitch, one, two, and three. This is our last increase, so we're gonna do our little increase right there. I'm gonna kinda pull my tail out just for a second, and I'm gonna move my marker. This is our last increase round, and we're going to single crochet three and then increase on the fourth stitch. It's the same as our whale, but things are gonna get a little bit different um, in just a moment. So one, two, three and four increase one two three four and increase one two I only want to go through the front loop there. Oops. And four. Increase. One. Two. Three. Four. And increase. One. Two, three, four, and increase. One, two, three, four, and increase. All right, so we're gonna move our tail real quick, and now. We're going to go around for seven rounds for the body, but for the next row, before we go around and around, I'm gonna create a little ridge. So usually when you go through the front stitch, you create this kind of material where it kind of looks bubbly, but I'm going to go through only the back loop instead of going through the front loop, which this is the front loop, this is the back loop. I'm going to go through the back loop only and single crochet around for just this round and this is going to create i'm gonna go through the center and this is going to create a nice line of those front loop stitches kind of just laying on the top of that round so we're just going to single crochet around until we get back to our tail going through the back loop only all these 30 stitches that we just created. Because that last round we went from 24 stitches to 30. Yeah. 
halfway there. I'm not trying to cover with my thumb. Oops. I'm trying to pinch it. Makes it easier. We're essentially smoothing out the, all those increases because those increases tend to look a little hexagonal. Look like they have six sided on them. I've seen people do really interesting uh, increasing rounds where they stagger their increases and they don't like have them all line up with one another and they look really pretty. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna get that fluff out of the way. And I believe that this is the last stitch. No, these are the last stitch right here. So now it doesn't technically kind of line up, but they're working really nice. And I usually keep this towards the back so it's not noticeable. But here you can see that there's this line that's just kind of formed around here. For the next six rounds after this round, so this is round one and we're gonna do seven rounds total of the body. So we just did one and we're gonna do six more of just going around, but this time we're gonna start going through the front loop again. That way we don't have any weird lines. I want a nice smooth marshmallow. I just wanted this one little line here so that it would actually be um, nice and defined right there. So um, I'm gonna go around for six more rounds of 30 stitches. I'm trying not to lose any stitches along the way and I'm just gonna keep going around and around and around until I get to um, the final sixth round. And then I'll show you what I do for some decreasing and how I actually am going to be going back to doing this line on just the bottom. I have to also define it before I do my decreasing. So I'll be right back after I do six more rounds. Okay, so we did our seven rounds total. So the one round of our back loop only and then one, two, three, four, five, six rounds around. This is our back. And so before I go any further, I like to add the eyes before I forget because I will forget. And because this is the back, I like to kind of make sure that that's centered and then I'll kind of squish it just to make sure and have my tail kind of go straight across the center so I can tell where my center is. I'm then going to place the eyes just slightly above center, so um, four rows up. I'm gonna plop my eye in, I'm gonna plop my other eye, two, four, up. And then just try to make sure that they are evenly spaced, that they look nice. I'm pretty happy with how those look. And then I'm just gonna put my backers on there. And then we're going to work on our decreasing for um, the rest of the piece here. So I add my eyes before I stuff because I don't want it, it, to, you can't add eyes once you've stuffed a little bit. It's way too much of a pain in the butt. And now that those are snapped on, I'm happy with that. Our little guy has eyes. And if you wanted to, you could do the blush right now, but I'm not going to, not until I do the mouth. I'm going to do that all at the same time. So now we are going to go through the back loops again just to do our decreasing part. So our decreasing is essentially the inverse or the opposite of our increasing. We're going to be going from 30 stitches down to 24. So we're going to single crochet three and then decrease two. This is a little bit different than my whale video per se because while I'm doing these decreases, I'm going to be going through the back loop only just to make it so that there's another ridge that'll make it so that this looks a little bit more even and a little bit, it, it just gives it a better shape and I like that. So we're gonna go through the back loop only and we're going to go one, two, three. This is the only, this is the last row that we need to do this for. Go through four and five. Excuse me as I split my yarn, four and five, back loop only so that you get this nice ridge happening here. It's a little bit more difficult to do a, an invisible dis decrease while you're going through the back loop only. It's kind of a pain in the butt as I slur over my words. <laughs> then one, two, three, four, and five. 
five together, trying not to split our yarn. It happens every time when I'm going through the back loop. It is a lot harder to do decreasing this way, but I like how it looks, so that's why I do it. Four and five go together. I'm gonna pull my yarn to make sure that it is not staying there. There we go, one, two, three, four, and five. If you don't want it to be invisible, you could easily just go through the back loop of the fifth one and just skip the fourth one. If you're having a hard time doing this decreasing way, I just like how this looks better. It's a bit less of a hole showing up, so four and five go together when you do the way that I'm doing. But you could just skip the stitch and call that good if you're having a harder time. It doesn't make that much of a difference, honestly. One, two, three, four, five, together. One, two, three, four, and five, together. I believe this is our last decrease for this round. One, two, three, four, and five together. If I can get it in, geez, on four and five, and decrease. And now here, I'm actually gonna move my marker out of where it was and I'm going to move it forward into this decrease stitch so that I can see it. You could easily see from right here that this is right around where you go and you need to stop, but I like doing it this way. Here on out, you're gonna be working through the front loop only again. So we're going to then single crochet one, two, and then put three and four together as a um, decrease. So one, two, we are going from 24 stitches down to 18 as well. So three and four go together. I'm going through the front loops again only. It makes it a lot easier. You'll see that this line is what we made when we went through the back loop only before. So that's why I did that. One, two, three and four together and an invisible decrease. One, two, three and four, one, two, three and four, one, two, three and four together, invisible decrease, one, two, this is our last decrease, three and four together. I'm then gonna move forward, I'm gonna take that fluff out, there you go, that's not where it should be. Take our tail and move it forward. You can literally see every little tiny flaw when you're working with white yarn, so be careful. Here, I like to stuff very lightly. I usually stuff pretty much my amigurumi very firm, and so that it is, um, I usually put a lot of stuffing in my amigurumi, but for the marshmallow, I find that in order to create a nice marshmallow shape, I actually don't stuff it that much. So I'm gonna go stuff this real quick, very lightly, with some polyfill. And I'm going to just very lightly kind of make sure that the eyes are cupped and pushed forward a little bit. Very lightly going mostly towards the outside to just get it so that it has its shape. And usually would make this super duper stuffed, but I'm not going to because I find that the more I stuff, the less like a marshmallow it will look. And I kind of try to make sure that it keeps its shape as I stuff. So next up, I've got it to the point where I need to stuff a little bit more there, but I'm gonna decrease a little bit more so that it can be a bit more smooth. We're gonna be going from 18 stitches down to 12. So we are going to do single crochet one, 
trying not to get our fluff inside of our knitted stitches, and then decrease. One, two, one, decrease, one, decrease, one, decrease, one, decrease, and one, decrease. Here I have 12 stitches left. We only have one more decreasing round, but I'm gonna put my last little bit of fluff on the inside here real quick, just to make sure that it is nice and rounded. I'm um, again, not trying to overstuff. I'm just trying to make it so that it is nice and smooth and it doesn't look wonky. All right, so I just stuffed a little bit more and I'm pretty happy with how it is filled. So now I'm gonna do the last decrease round. So that is essentially decreasing every single stitch. So we're gonna go from 12 down to six. And then once we're to our six, I'm going to just kind of slip them all up like I do in my whale video. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a second as soon as I get all six of these done. So two, three, four, nope, four, five, and our last decrease, six. Try not to go through both, there we go. I'm going to take my slots and put it over there. I'm going to take my skeezers. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to pull that all the way through. Just open up my loop like that. I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to first cut the tail so that it is just inside my marshmallow. Pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to close up my circle and I am going to essentially take my yarn and I'm going to go on the center from the back to the front of the first stitch of the next round, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth stitch right there. We're going to take all of that and then just kind of pinch it and pull it. That closes it right up right there. I also like to put my darning needle through the top of the stitch and then through the middle of my center there and go through as far as I can. So I'm gonna go through the top of my marshmallow, pull it through, kind of make sure that it is tight as I go. That way it is just nice and seamless. You can't see where it goes. Here I am going to move my white yarn. We are done with that for this pattern. We had made our marshmallow. We are happy. I'm moving that over. We are going to be moving onto our chocolate and our graham cracker there. So I'm going to cut my tail, plop it into the yarn tail basket, which I keep over there and just let it kind of sit. You can, if you want, do the face at this point and then work on your graham cracker and your chocolate so that you can then be all done after and let everything dry and have it all be good. So I'm actually gonna show how I do the face right now. Um, and then we're gonna do our graham cracker and our chocolate. I like to take just a little bit on this brush. I find that this is like the perfect little size. And then I kind of dab it right there and twist. And the thing with cheeks is you can always add more. So don't start off the gate aggressively and add too much at once because you can always add more blush. You cannot take away. So I always like to try to add a little bit so that it is subtle like so. I think that that's nice and subtle. That's what I like about the blush is I like to start and I like to build. So 
that is the blush it is a little aggressive this time around, but i'm pretty happy with it either way okay so my first attempt at making the mouth did not go well i'm going to transfer over to the uh little 3d fabric paint that has a little bit of a, a more narrow tip here i made the original one a little bit too big and then he fell over and went on the carpet and it just it wasn't great time for me so I had to clean that up and luckily it did come off. If you get it right away it'll come out of the carpet. You just have to scrub with like Dawn dish soap. So I'm going to try this again and I'm going to try to make them so that they look like they match. Imagine that. Somehow I made one really thin and I made the other one super thick so I don't really know. I suck at this. <laughs> so I'm going to basically start off real slow nope that is not doing what i want it to do do i just need to change my angle it's got like none in it so i just made a smiley face i did some testers out on some tissues there we go I am happy with that. That will work. I'm gonna thicken up your little side here so that you match and you're even. There we go. And yes, that is sticking up. There's a little bit of an edge there, but once it dries overnight, I will chop that off with some scissors and not try to mess with it. Cause knowing me, I will try to mess with it and then I will make it a big dangly gross thing. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then I will go on and show you how I do the rest of it. Be right back. Okay, so next up we're actually going to be making our little squares for our amigurumi. We're essentially going to be making two graham crackers and one chocolate. I already made the chocolate. It's already hanging out, chilling out. So he's going to go over here. But we're going to be making another graham cracker because there's two graham crackers and one chocolate piece. They are all the same size. So we're essentially doing the same pattern three times two in the honey and one in the chocolate so i'm going to show you how i do that and essentially we're doing the exact same pattern we're just not doing as many repetitions as we did with tiny box tim and with the cock block which i'll link down below and the way that we go about that is we're going to do our slip knot we are going to chain our two one and two and we're going to go inside of our very first chain instead of placing six single crochet like we did with our original we're going to just put four because there are four corners to the square we're not making a hexagon we're making a square so one two three and four I'm going to pull our tail and so this is where things get a little bit interesting we have one two three four stitches and essentially every single corner we're going to do a double increase so to start off we're going to create our corners in which we're going to go inside this one stitch here this is corner one this is essentially going to be corner two three and this is our fourth corner so one corner two corner three corner four and we're essentially going to be placing uh, and increasing our stitches from 4 to 12 because every single round you add 8 stitches because of the double increase. So instead of doing just one in, uh, single crocheting one inside this stitch and then increasing the one, so there's two stitches inside that one stitch, we're going to go in one extra time and make it so that inside that one stitch there's three. So one, two, three, and now we're gonna turn and go into our next corner, which is one, two, and then adding a third stitch inside that as well. This is our third corner, so we're gonna do one, two, three, and then we're turning our last side or our fourth stitch right here one two three 
here I have a beginning little square as you can see and essentially every time that you increase you're creating an extra space or an extra single crochet that you have to go over for the next round if that makes sense so we are going to now start on our next stitch so we're going to take our tail and kind of pull it through the last stitch here so you can see where your marker is and from here we are going to single crochet one increase double increase and then single crochet one on every single corner and this is how that looks so single crochet one this little corner here this little stitch right here you place three single crochet inside that one stitch two three and then single crochet again one that is that corner so then we're going to do that again single crochet one place an increased stitch along your corner one two three so you have three stitches in there and then single crochet another one we've turned the corner single crochet one increase three inside that one stitch two three and then single crochet one again that's our third corner we've turned once more and this is our final corner to turn so we're going to single crochet one increase the three on your corner one two three and then single crochet one I like to then take my yarn move it so that it is going through my last repetition again so I can keep track of it and now we are going to single crochet two get our corner with our increase uh, our double increase so three single crochet within one stitch and then two so one two increase on the corner because every time you increase you're creating two single crochet on either side of your corner that you're going to be creating a space for it to go one and then two you've now turned the corner so now again one two corner one two so one two do your increase one two three and then do another one single crochet and then a two single crochet you've turned the corner so we're going to do that again one two increase one two and then three within that stitch trying not to split my yarn one two again we've turned our corner this is our last repetition of this round so we're going to do one two increase this corner piece right here one two three and then one and two trying not to get through our tail there we go i'm going to move my tail up and then now that we increased again we were at two now we're uh, at one two three corner increase one two three one two three corner increase one two three one two three corner increase one two three one two three corner increase one two and then it will be three i'll show you just how i do that so one two and three we're going over the increase from the previous round essentially 
as I split my yarn. Three. Increase. The three again. So one, two, and three. Increase on your corner. One, two, three. Flip, new corner. One, two, three. Increase. One, two, three. And then we finish off that side. One, two, three. Flip our corner. And now we have this side to do. So one, two, three. Double increase. One, two, three. One, across, two, three and now we are going to do it again on this corner we flipped our work and we are now working on our last repetition of this round one two oh i split my work so now we've turned our corner and we are going to go one two three, increase, double increase essentially, one, two, three, then we're going to again do one, two, and three. Pull a little bit more yarn out. And now we are going to move our yarn over so that we can see where our new beginning is. And we are going to go one, two, three, four corner. One, two, three, four. Because every time we're creating a stitch for us to do on the next round. Two, three, four. Increase. One, two. Three, and then one, two, three, four. We're going to do that again. Turn our corner. One, two, three, four. Increase. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Turn our corner, do this all again. One, two, three, four. Increase. One, two, three. All on the same stitch. One, two, three, four, and then turn our corner, one, this is our last repetition for this round, and then we only have one more round after this, two, three, four, increase, so one, two, three, and then one. Two, three, four. Now we have our tail to move. We're going to move our tail up one more again. I'm then going to do five, increase five, 
5, increase 5, 5, increase 5, or essentially you're doing 10 single crochets along each side, but I find that this is the easiest way to explain it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and increase, do a double increase, so 1, 2, and 3, which turns our corner, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we turn our corner and we're doing our next repetition, so 1, 2, 3, four, five, do an increase, so one, two, three to turn the corner, then one, two, three, four, five, We've turned our corner, we're going to do another repetition on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, increase, one, two, three, turn, go one, two, three, four, five. So now we have our last repetition. So one, two, three, four, and increase, do the double increase of one, two, and three, and then one, two, three, four, and you could do five, but I've been noticing that when I do five and what I do for my closing off method, it doesn't look quite how I want it to, it's a little bit of bumpy, so I'm gonna actually do something different. I'm gonna just do four and hold that short because when I do what I close off, it technically creates a stitch, kind of. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I'm actually gonna cut my yarn and pull that yarn through that loop. I'm not slip stitching off or anything, but I'll show you what I do in just a moment. At first, I'm gonna take my tail over here uh, my beginning tail, and I'm just going to kind of weed that through my stitches up here. I'm going to go underneath and weasel them underneath my stitches through the centers just to kind of make them look a little bit neater. Just through a couple, and then I'm going to weed it down again across. You kind of got to wiggle it. And so that's going to be there. And because I'm hot gluing these on, it won't really super duper matter. But I just wanted to make it so that they were secure and that they wouldn't come out. So I'm going to plop that over there. Actually, I'm going to put that into the tail bin. There you go. And now we're going to take our yarn on our darning needle and I'm essentially going to do a slip stitching thing that makes it so that it's completely smooth so I'm going to skip this next stitch right after what um, so the fifth stitch I was supposed to go into I'm going to skip that and go from the front and into the back on the side um, my goal is to create a stitch which will make it so that this looks a little bit more seamless so that the side is not as apparent for um, my little s'more dude. So we're gonna take this and go from the front to the back through the V like so 
and then we're gonna take our yarn and go through the center of the last stitch so single crochet number four we're gonna go through the center of that and I'm gonna kind of weed it through some of these back here as well so that it'll be nice and hidden so we're gonna pull that tail and what you'll notice is that creates a V. Yeah, that looks a little bit more smooth. So from the future, I would say only do four single crochet on the very last repetition so that you can just kind of make it seamless and so it's completely hidden because you can't tell that there's a seam there really. And the more you pull your tail, the more um, tight your stitch will look. So just try to make it so that if you need to pull it up a little bit or down a little bit or However you need to adjust it so that it looks even, do that. I'm then going to take my tail and I'm going to work it through the rest of these little back stitches here. Like so. And then I'm going to work it through um, these three right here. But not too, too much. That way it's not super apparent. I'm going to go through these. And I'm going to go back down so that it's not going to be along the brim here that way it's not as apparent that didn't sound good there we go so now that is done and I'm going to just cut my tail and call that good now essentially I make three of these and I already made two others and I've got my chocolate and I've got my two graham crackers I've got my marshmallow over here but he is currently just kind of hanging out and drying and I need to work on his little smiley face a little bit more because that came out pretty janky looking. So I'm going to actually fix that mouth and be a little bit less rushed when I'm doing the mouth. All right, so I've already attempted this once and it's been a lot of fun, but essentially when I hot glue this, I just kind of do the top and I do the bottom and I make sure that my seams are lined up. So I take this seam right here and I line, I line it up with my seam back here so that they are both facing the back. And essentially I'm going to take my um, bottom and have that be only a graham cracker. There's a little bit of glue here, but my other glue gun died and wouldn't put out anymore. So I just have to kind of live with this. There we go. There's a little bit of extra glue just kind of hanging out. There we go. Let's put a little bit of a circle around here. around the base. New glue gun, having issues. Just kind of spread it around. It's not sitting up. I'm going to make sure that my, this is my front, that's my back. This is my back. So I'm going to put that like so, and I'm going to kind of squish it as best I can. One issue with hot gluing things is sometimes the hot glue will come through the uh, stitches. So you're going to want to be careful that it is going to be hot. And I'm also going to do this fairly quickly with the chocolate one. These are my backs. So here I'm going to do the exact same thing where I take my circle. There we go. And this glue gun works much better. I like to create a little X and kind of make it squishy squish. Like so. Have my back facing the back area. I'm going to push that down, make sure that it is firmly down. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing essentially with the graham cracker on top, except this time, now that we have a square surface, I'm going to go over the second from last row, try not to get it too, too close to the top. And I had to get another glue stick real quick, so I'm going to go over those one more time. Create a little X across the center and kind of put a splotch in each little area. We're gonna take our back, make sure that it's lined up with our back, kind of just plop it on there. Then I'm actually gonna take it and put it over here underneath a bunch of stuff and just squish him and let him just kind of exist in this squish state for like as long as I can let him live there. As long as I can let him live there, he will be fine it will dry and it will be squished and it will be perfect. So, all right, now to ending credit Cody's. If you put your 
s'more upside down. He's just a really sad s'more. All right, so basically once you get your s'mores all hot glued, that is the final step. They're all done. They're a bit firmer on top, which actually I like a lot because it helps with the squish factor for your s'more. That's all there is to this tutorial. Remember that you can get the PDF for this printable down below if you would like to help this channel out. There are links for that down below. Do the whole like, subscribe, hit the bell because my next video is going to be a review video. But then after that, I'm gonna be doing a cute crochet sloth in the squish body form. So stay tuned for that. I'm also gonna be doing a lion. So that's pretty much it. And until next time, guys, bye.